In this brief instructional video, I'm going to show you how to do a demand archive from a Eurotherm 6100 series data recorder. In front of us, we have six points of I.O., which is currently being trended and recorded on a 6100A recorder. I'm using the Bridge software to remotely view this on my PC. Now for this demand archive, what we want to do is we want to be able to take the data that's internal on the internal flash memory and move that, or should I say make a copy of that, to a USB stick. You have the ability to archive it to many different places through many different ways, but for this example we want to utilize a USB stick. First thing I'm going to do is plug in my USB stick. Right now I have a 2 gigabyte USB stick, however keep in mind that you do have the capable uh, access to up to 8 gigabytes of memory. This is both for the USB stick and the compact flash card. When I plug in the USB stick to the recorder, you'll notice within a couple seconds a disk icon appears. The disk icon basically represents the fact that the recorder was able to identify the USB stick as well as the ability to indicate how much space you have available. Next, we're going to need to log in as engineer. When I click on the logged out button, it's going to bring in the log in dialog. Next, if we click on the drop down underneath user ID, we're presented with three logins which is operator, engineer, and service. Service is only used by factory use only. In order for me to do an archive, I do need to be logged in as engineer. So I choose engineer and put in the default password of 100. Now keep in mind, you can always go in at a later time to not only add and remove users, but to also assign what rights that particular user has. So for example, if you wanted the user, the operator, to have the ability to do an archive, can always allow them to do that as well. Now that I'm logged in as engineer and I have my USB stick plugged in, I then want to click on the root menu at the very bottom right hand corner. When I click on that menu, a box will pop up and indicate a couple different options that I can choose. I want to look at the operator. Clicking the operator button will bring up six buttons going across the top of the screen and what I want to focus on is the actual archive button itself. When I click on archive, I'm presented with local and remote. Local is for doing an archive to your local media, such as your USB stick or a compact flash. Remote is for doing an archive to an FTP location, uh, being that you had set one up in the first place. For this instructional video, however, we will not cover FTP setup. I'll cover that in another video. So again, if we click on archive, local, we're then provided the following options. At the very top of the screen here, you'll say that, see that it says last archive was done at 2.40 p.m. on February 1st. The media, we have a couple different options. When you click on the drop down, you're provided with media card and USB front. As an additional option, you can purchase a USB card that allows for two additional USB ports. Typically used for things like a mouse or keyboard or USB barcode scanner, you can also use this for archiving data. For this example, we're using the front USB, so we simply select USB front. Going down the list here, you can see that depending on what your strategy is, you can archive a specific amount of data, i.e. if we want to archive the last day's worth of data, simply push the button archive last data. One thing I do want to point out, however, is the bring archive up to date and the archive all. When you click the Bring Archive Up to Date, it's essentially going to look at the last archive date and time and push over any data since that date. The benefit to doing this is that it saves the overall archiving time. Archiving All, on the other hand, doesn't matter what you have on your USB stick, it's going to take anything that it finds on the internal memory and push it over to USB stick. The benefit of doing this, however, is that it makes sure that you're not missing any information. Suspend archiving simply pauses the archiving process whereas cancel archive will cancel the archive process. Underneath where it says archive transfer inactive means that I'm currently not doing an archive and then below that the media size and free space is information taken from the USB stick. As you can see I have a 2 gigabyte stick inserted and I have roughly 737 megabytes free. Now that I'm logged in as engineer, I've got my USB stick inserted. I've now have gone to the archive menu and told the recorder that I want to do a push to my USB front. I now simply have to choose what I want to push. 
Let's just say that I want to archive the last day's worth of data. I simply push this button and you'll notice a couple things. First, at the bottom where it says archive transfer, it currently says that it's active. Next, in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice that the disk icon is now green, indicating that I'm currently writing the data to the disk. Now the normal process on how long it takes to do a demand archive is up to how much data you're currently recording. As you can see, I finished in under 10 seconds. When it does finish, however, you'll notice that a message pops up and says demand archive finished. Simply hit OK. And now all the data from the last day is on your USB stick. From here, you can take this and dump it into your computer for viewing through review, or if you're recording CSV files, view the data through Microsoft Excel. That's it. That's all that's required to do a demand archive.